Hey Tubies, it's Psychic Bob. Well, welcome to Wednesday, to Wiccan Wednesday. I want to show you here something that is just beautiful. As I've shown some of you before, this, these are the uh, beautiful golden poppy flowers that are right here by the creek. We're right by the creek and you'll see some marigolds. This beautiful uh, gold and orange tone, these are very popular colors, particularly in Buddhist countries. Uh, because the Buddhist robes are oftentimes done in these sort of colors. So anyways, that's going to tie in with what we're going to talk about uh, in just a little while. But uh, I had another thing I want to show you here. Look what is blooming amidst the golden poppies. A single red rose. Is that beautiful or what? Huh? Pretty amazing stuff, isn't it? <sighs> well, it's good to be with you. I almost didn't get this video to you guys today. I've had a really, really bad night. I was under severe attack, electronic harassment. And uh, as many of you know, I'm a targeted individual and the torture has been horrific. I'm just now I'm able to walk. I couldn't walk last night. Something went happened to my legs. And I was really sick. I was vomiting, blood, I was hemorrhaging. Horrible. Anyways, I'm alive. We're going to go on along, so come on along with us. It's been raining this morning. The river's a little high, a little, cho a little muddy. It's calm now, but it's uh, still a gray sky. You know, when you're feeling really challenged physically, when your energy levels are low, it's good to draw some power from the earth. Today I'm really still feeling quite weak and so I decided to come and visit our friend Mr. Rock. And so I'm going to ask Mr. Rock, Mr. Rock, may you give us your blessing today as we lay our hands upon you. May we draw some power unto ourselves from you. And what you want to do is lay your receptive hand on the, the rock I'm left-handed, so my receptive hand is my opposite hand, my right hand, because the hand you do not write with, that's your receptive hand. And I'm just going to absorb some energy from this beautiful giant rock. And so you see, Mother Nature provides us people and things and objects to heal us naturally. So I absorb some energy into my hand through that rock. Our hands, our palms have chakras in them that allow us to receive energy. So when you have something sacred, you should hold it in your receptive hand and you'll draw to yourself divine power. Just something that I do and I find works for me. And here we are at this wonderful majestic oak tree. And I want to give a greeting to the tree today. Hello, Mr. Tree, so good to see you. You know, trees are very healing. And if you approach a tree, it might just let you hug it and you'll get life prana. Mr. Tree, Sege Bob's having a very rough day. Will you share some of your energy with me? And you'll get a subtle sense that you're welcome to approach the tree. You can also just lay your hand on it like before and absorb its wonderful energies, giving thanks to the tree. And you might want to share some energy with the tree and give it a hug. <laughs> Thank you, tree. You're so good. Thank you for your friendship. You see? The trees are our friends. Another source of great blessing and energy and power is called the Sai Sin. I'm wearing this today. This is a sacred Buddhist charm. It's a cord. And we're going to talk about that later today. Uh, what this sacred cord is and how you can get one and learn about the history and the ritual behind it. We're going to actually do a little Sai Sin ritual so I can teach you guys how you can create your own magical cords. But I've been wearing this today as well and uh, it's been giving me some peace and healing and strength. So hang with us. We're going to have about that in just a little while. 
tubies, look at this. A magical sight. The red deer have come right up to me. Can you guys see them? They're down in the water drinking. They're beautiful. You know, they say to see deer, it's a sign of messages from the gods. The ancient ones send us the sign to the deer. In Shinto, they believe that the gods speak through deer. How beautiful. Look at that. Oh my goodness. They're so beautiful. Aren't they wonderful? Wow, you know, I feel so blessed. I've been having a really rough day and you know, when you get a sign like that, if you're a spiritual person, it means something. It's, it's a sign because it means that we're not alone, that the gods are with us. As I said in Shinto, they said that when you see a deer in natural and it just appears, it's a sign that the gods are sending you a message. And I, I believe that because I've had a really rough last two days and man, I needed that today. I'm glad you guys are here with us. Well, Tubies, I finished running my errands today up at the shopping center, and now I'm back home. And we're going to talk about a mystical ritual. It's a Buddhist tradition. It comes out of Thailand called the Sai Sin. Now, as I showed you earlier, I'm wearing a Sai Sin currently. Now, you can actually wear as many as you want. Um, the tradition is that once you have this put on, you wear it for at least three days. This one I've had on for about three days, so I think I'm ready for a fresh size sin. But you can wear them until they fall off. And the tradition is that if you want to remove them, that you untie them rather than cut them. So I may take this one off, but we're going to explore this today. Budam saranam gachami. Tamam saranam gachami. Sangam saranam gachami. I'm chanting the three refuges prayers. I offer incense here to our Buddha. I've set up a shrine to Lord Buddha. And uh, we're going to do something like you might see in a Thai temple today. Now in Thailand, and they have an entire ritual. And what Sai Sin is? Sai means holy and Sin means thread or string. So this is the ritual of the holy string. And it's believed that the Buddha sends his power through the string as a form of his blessing. And in the Thailand temples of Thailand, uh, the monks will have giant like rolls of string or here I'm using a, a thin yarn string um, and traditional colors are white or yellow or orange or red those seem to be the three or four colors that are predominantly used in this ritual today we're going to use our yellow thread now the Sai Sin ritual is traditionally done in temples by Buddhist monks but the truth is anybody can do it uh, if they have a home shrine. So to do the Sai Sin ritual, all you need is an image of the Buddha. It could be a picture or a statue. I happen to have a beautiful statue here that I thought you guys would like to see. I've had this many years, and as I'm renovating my house, I keep finding treasures that are tucked away. <laughs> so here's our beautiful Buddha. And this is the Buddha who is standing. And uh, I love this because whenever the Buddha is seen standing, it means that he's coming to action. He's coming to help you. And I think that the standing Buddha image is perfect for this ritual. Now this ritual is very simple, but don't let its simplicity, uh, you know, trick you to thinking there's no power in it because there's definitely a lot of power in this. So what do you need? You need an image of the Buddha. Uh, if you have the ability, it'd be good to set up a candle, some light for him, some incense, and any other offerings you want. And then the main thing that you just have to have is string. Now again, I told you to get cord. This is a cotton yarn, um, you know, and it's in yellow. So yellow, orange, red, uh, peach, you know, the kind of orangey yellow colors. 
are the colors you want to stick with. And this is based on the idea that the Buddha's robes were in this color. Now, I haven't actually heard Thai people say that this string represents a thread from the clothing of the Buddha, but I think it kind of is implied in it, you know. And what it means is that the Buddha's power travels through the cord to you. Now, what's really cool, and I'm going to set it up here to show you, is the way you can do the Sai Sin ritual can be very simple or very elaborate. And we're going to do something that's mildly elaborate. So, come on along. Now, I would recommend that you have at least six to seven feet. Even a little more might be better, but a minimum of six to seven feet of cord. And that's not hard. That won't cost you a lot of money. I bought this entire, this is like 300 yards. I bought it for like $1.89. So we're not talking a lot of money here. So I've got about seven feet right now cut off. And after you measure out around seven feet, give or take, then you want to just cut your string. Okay, so now I've cut off my string. Okay, my size and my holy string, holy thread. Okay, and so um, then this is the part that is really interesting. You want to take your string and then wrap it around the Buddha. Okay, so we could wrap it around his head. You can wrap it around his body, you know, however you want to do it. But you want to wrap the Buddha in this string. Okay. You might want to tie it off on one point. I just put a little tie in it so it won't fall off. And uh, you can have the string coming off the hand, off the feet, anywhere. But for this statue, I just had it coming off the neck, okay? Now what's really interesting is in the Buddhist temples when they do this, they have like hundreds of feet of string. And what they'll do is they'll stretch the string across the entire length of the temple. And they can get really elaborate because they can have multiple strings and then they do patterns interlacing the strings. And sometimes they create like a net, like a fish net, coming from the Buddha over the temple. So it'll go all the way up to the ceiling and stretch across the ceiling. Like, so here's my ceiling. And so the string will go all the way up in the air and it will stretch across. Then what happens is when you go into the temple, a priest is there, a Buddhist monk, and he'll hand you a piece of the string and you will hold that string uh, during the ritual and it'll it may link up to the ceiling but it may even grow all the way across the temple so here you see I have the string in my hand here and it's stretching all the way across to the Buddha so the idea is that the community of Buddhists are all united and so when they have these elaborate string ceremonies they tie the string to the Buddha and then it goes all through the temple and then when you come in of course you're handed a piece so here's my string I would have been handed that and I would hold on to that and it ties to the Buddha now in the Buddhist temples that the statues of the Buddha are so massive you can't flip them over I might want to add because I tried doing this the other day I was so excited I was pulling on my string and I almost toppled one of my statues I had a smaller statue so I went with a heavier statue so I won't pull it off or flip it but the idea is well, as you're doing this visualize light golden light coming from the statue and traveling through the string and into your hands now once you get the string you know you hold it the, the way they do is they start doing prayers um, and one of the prayers that we can do I'll teach you this is a, a Buddhist prayer I did earlier it's called the three refuges it's from the ancient Pali the original writings of the Buddha were in Pali and and Sanskrit as well but the Pali texts uh, chant the three refuges which is Buddham Saranam Gachami that means I take refuge in the Buddha and then Dhammam Saranam Gachami it means I take refuge in the Dharma and then Sangam Saranam Gachami I take refuge in the Sangha the Sangha is the people who follow and believe and the Buddha so now we have our string and then the tradition is to tie the string to your body it's traditional that you wrap the hand the string around your hand or you can wrap it around your head kind of like a crown tied around your head I'm not going to do it around my head today because it's too hard to do that in film but I'm going to tie it around my hand so you can see I have it wrapped around my hand okay 
Now don't tie it off on your hand, just wrap it for now, okay? I'll explain that later, but just wrap it so you can take it off as well. And then while you're doing it, you visualize the golden light traveling to the sacred cord. And we could do the refuges prayer. And the way you chant it is like this. Budam saranam gachami sangam, uh, excuse me, damam saranam gachami sangam saranam gachami. And as you chant that again, visualize power of the Buddha, him sending emanating rays down the cord to your, your cord wrapped around your body. You can also tie it around your waist or your head or your neck, anywhere you want. Now, one of the other traditions is that if you have multiple Buddhist images, you also string the string to them. So like if I had a number of Buddhist statues here, which I could, uh, then I would string the string to the, all the statues and then out to me. So all the holy images get consecrated by the string. Today, to keep it simple, I'm just using one statue. Uh, I saw a picture where they had pictures of the Buddha on the wall. And so they strung the string from the statue up to the pictures on the wall and then to the people. So there are a lot of ways to do this. But for now, we're keeping it simple, okay? So let's do our chant again. And it's the three refuges. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma, which means the teaching of the Buddha. I take refuge, refuge in the Sangha, the people who believe in Buddha. So, Buddham Saranam Gachami, Dhamam Saranam Gachami, Sangam Saranam Gachami. Om. Now, after you finish your chants, you can remove the string from your body. In the temple, they would take it back up to the altar. They just untie it from your body and, and pull it up. Because remember, all the strings are going back to the altar. I can imagine in a giant temple that there might be some drama if you had a lot of people and they're walking around and all their strings get crisscrossed. <laughs> I mean, in my world, that would be, it'd be all tangled up in knots. But, you know, in the ideal world, all the strings will go back up to the altar. And so, and then they remove the string from, from the Buddha statue. And that's the last cord that comes off. All right. Now, what you have is a sacramental, a Buddha sacramental. This string through the prayers and the power of the Buddha is now considered Sai Sin, which means holy thread. And this string can then now be cut up in the temple with the monks do is they'll take it and they cut it into smaller pieces. And that's where they make the bracelets from. See like the one I'm wearing? That's just a large one that's been cut up. So if you do this at home, you can make a lot of bracelets for your family and friends this way and just get one string. And after you you know, do it, then you open it up. Try not to get it tangled and knotted like I always do. But uh, you can see we can lay it out on our table. And now we've got an amazing sacrament. And anytime you need a bracelet, you can just keep the string in a special place, like keep it on your altar or in a sacred bag or box. And whenever you need a holy bracelet, since this has already been consecrated, you can just go cut off a piece and then make a bracelet. So there you go. Now, if you want to cut this into individual bracelets, I'd recommend about 12 inches for each bracelet. That gives you enough room to tie it onto people and trim it down if you need to. So I think 12 inches is a good size because that covers all wrist sizes. And if you have to tie it on yourself, 12 inches will allow you to be able to hold the cord and manipulate it without too much difficulty. And so now I just cut off about a 12 inch segment of this cord, as you can see here. So there it is. Now, I put our other rest of our cord up at the feet of the Buddha. It's traditional to keep it near the Buddha statue. Um, so I put it up there. Eventually, I'm going to get a little bag, a sacred string bag to keep it in. But for right now, it'll just sit there. And uh, this is now ready to be tied on. Now, as you can see, this is why I recommend cutting it in 12-inch strips because it gives me, since I'm tying it myself, it gives me enough cord to work with. Now, the tradition is that you knot it on yourself three knots. 
So you want to tie three knots in it to secure it. And with each one, you, you reflect on the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, Sangha, the triple gem of Buddhism. Now I took off my other Sai Sin bracelet for simplicity's sake, so you can see what we're doing. So this is the new Sai Sin bracelet. I just tied it three times. I got a triple knot on it. Now if you tie yours on, and of course you're going to have some extra like this, just trim it down then so it's not straggling. So I've got my three knots and now I'm ready to trim it off. And now I just trimmed off the excess. I couldn't film it because I can't hold the camera and the scissors and cut. <laughs> so anyways, I just let it trimmed off that extra. And you want to have just a tiny little, you know, little uh, end on it. That's all, just a little tassel. And there is our new size sin bracelet. Hail to the Buddha. Hail. Well, guys, I have so enjoyed being here with you today and sharing this mystical and fun ritual of the Sai Sin. Tell me in the box below, do you wear, have you ever worn a Sai Sin brace? I'm curious if any of you have been to Thailand or maybe you're Thai and come from a Thai family, you've had this experience. Tell me about your experiences with Sai Sin. If you don't know about Sai Sin, tell me about that as well. And tell me, do you have a sacred cord that you wear? Like what type of cord? Maybe because the, there are other religions that do similar rituals this is the one that's the most famous, though. And tell me about your sacred cords or if you've ever worn one. You guys are best. Listen, thanks for being here. Keep it here at Spirit Channel. We got more coming. Oh, my gosh. Tomorrow is going to be so much fun. We're going to have a vlog Thursday. And I've got a lot of fun stuff to show you. i got a new item to show you connected to the TV series Cobra Kai. And we'll have that tomorrow. So make sure to be here. We're going to go out and have some fun. Um, we're going to take you to some cool places tomorrow. So just come and hang with us. I love you guys. Thanks for being here. Make sure to thumbs up this video. Please like it, favorite it, share it with your friends. Hit subscribe. Be part of our channel. We would love you to be here. And I look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow for Vlog Thursday. Until then, may you always be under the blessing of the Buddha. Buddham Saranam Gachami Tamam Saranam Gachami Sangam Saranam Gachami Puram Nam 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 Nam